Hello everyone, welcome to some pegging. Uh, I was very busy in the last month, that's why I could not upload the part 2 video of the air quality prediction and analysis based on machine learning in time. I'm really really sorry for that. And uh, This is the part 2 video of the air quality prediction and analysis and I will be uploading videos regularly from now. So in the last video, we have uh, seen how to import data and how to clean the data and how to visualize the data and uh, in our data set we had lots of missing values and as we can see we don't have any missing values in our data set anymore so we are ready to apply machine learning right now because uh, if our data set uh, has lots of missing values then we cannot uh, apply machine learning because we will get uh, error or will not uh, will not be able to build the appropriate model now our data set doesn't have any missing values as we can see over here so we are ready to go and now we check the mm, data set as we can see that in our data set we have lots of uh, numerical uh, features right now and we have a few important features as well like state location and type these are the most important features uh, for our target column and now we are going to calculate their quality index based on uh, the formula so this is the formula over here we have used to calculate the individual pollutant index uh, for sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide rspm and spm and pm 2.5 uh, i found this uh, i found this formula on the internet over here as you can see the indian uh, equation for aqi that is air quality index so I have used this formula, this one. So in this function, we have used this formula, and uh, we have um, we are returning the uh, individual pollutant index for the sulfur dioxide in this uh, function. It's a very simple function, as you can see. We have only used if and uh, elif function to get the uh, individual pollutant index for sulfur dioxide and as you can see that this function is returning this individual pollutant for sulfur dioxide and uh, as you can see we get a new feature right now that is SOI now that is nothing but the individual pollutant for the sulfur dioxide and now we are doing the same thing for nitrogen dioxide and uh, this formula over here convert this formula into a program into a uh, function and this function is uh, returning the individual pollutant for sulfur dioxide as well as you can see we have our uh, individual pollutant for nitrogen dioxide and we do the same thing for uh, RSPM and it's returning the RPI that is the individual pollutant index for RSPM and we have done the same thing for uh, the SPMI and we are getting SPMI that is uh, individual pollutant index for SPM and now we are going to calculate the AQI because we have the individual pollutant index for all the pollutants right now we can uh, calculate the AQI that is the air quality index so we have used this simple function to calculate the AQI and this function is returning AQI and now as we can see that uh, in our uh, data set we have a new feature that is AQI this is the AQI so we have our AQI range in our uh, function now we can categorize the uh, air based on the AQI range and this is the standard Indian uh, category of the data if the QI uh, is 0 to 50 then the air quality is good if the QI is 51 to 100 the air quality is satisfactory and if the mm, air quality a QI is 100 to 200 then it's moderate uh, then the category is moderate and this is how if the a QI is 400 plus then the category is hazardous so we are going to category uh, categorize the data based on the AQI score and as you can see 
over here we have our aqi range and based on the aqi score it's saying if their quality is good or bad so right now as we can see that we have uh, most of uh, in our data set most of their uh, quality is uh, good and we have also moderate satisfactory poor and uh, hazardous air quality as well now it's time to split the data into dependent and independent uh, columns uh, to perform machine learning we have to uh, split the data set into dependent and independent variable so as independent variables we have all the pollutant index that is SOI, NOI, RPI, SPM, ITC and as uh, the dependent column we have our AQI uh, so we check our X that is the independent uh, column so this is how our X looks like that means all the dependent uh, independent columns and this is the Y dot hat that means it's showing the five first five uh, column of the first five elements of the target column now it's time to split the data set into training and test data set and uh, we are taking 20% of the data as test data uh, here uh, test size test size is 0 0.2 that means the test data is 20% uh, and the rest 80% is uh, data is the training data and we're using 70 as the random state uh, so we print the shape of x train x test y train and y test this is the output and uh, this is this is where we visualize our x train and x test data and now we, it's time to apply the machine learning algorithms on our data set so first we start with the linear regression and uh, we fit the x train and y train and we are over here we predict on the training set and then x train set and uh, we predict on the uh, test set and over here we are evaluating the model using some uh, evaluation metrics so as we can see our r squared value on the training set is 0 0.98 that means 98 percent and on the test set it's also 98% and we uh, visualize the actual and predicted values for the AQI for um, this model that is the linear regression model and as we can see the red line showing the actual value and the uh, uh, blue line over here is showing the predicted values and as we can see that the, the red line and the green line actually almost following the same path that means this model is uh, really good it's giving a very good output and next we are going to uh, apply the decision tree regression on our uh, model uh, on our data set so we have a uh, fit on x train and a y train and we predict the model uh, on x train and then we predict on x test and over here as we can see that our r squared value on the training data is 1 and r squared value on the test data is 0.99 that means uh, this model is overfitting uh, on our data set uh, so what is overfitting if you don't know no worries i will upload uh, videos on it later uh, i will explain it there so if the model is overfitting it is not a accurate model for on our, for our data set so we'll uh, ignore this uh, uh, machine learning model that is the decision to regressor next we are going to apply the random uh, forest regressor on data set so we have fit x train and uh, y train data and we predict on the x train data and then we predict on the x test data and now over here as you can see our the r squared value uh, r squared value is 0.99 and r squared value on test is 199 as well so this is a very good model as well it's giving almost 99 percent of accuracy and we have uh, visualized our model right here and uh, as we can see that uh, the 
line over here it is showing the actual data and the red dot it is showing the predicted data so as we can see they all the red lines are following the um, the black path that is the actual data so our model is very good only a few uh, dots are out of the line so our model is very good for the random forest regressor